Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I have played today during the day. So yeah, let's begin with it straight away without wasting any further time. So e4 by operant, I respond with c6, uh, d4 and then d5, the Karo card defends. Operant takes here, so it becomes the exchange variation. I take back and then operant develops the knight uh, to c3, uh, attacking the pawn straight away. So I respond with pawn to e6. Of course, that is defended already, but I just want to play solid here. Uh, and the ideas of getting my bishop mm, mm, over from d7 to uh, c6, or maybe even play a move like b6 and then free and get my bishop. So a couple of options there. And then my opponent develops the other knight on f3. I go with bishop to d7. Now, as I said in my last video as well, I'm trying to just create this different line where I uh, maneuver my bishop over to c6 eventually, or maybe just keep it over to d7 because sometimes you see e6 is a weakness in uh, many structures. e6 can be vulnerable. Uh, we see some sacrifice also many a times where open tries to sacrifice the bishop or the knight just to make sure that we take back with the f7 and then the f7 is no more defending the king, uh, which is a weak square always for uh, black pieces. So this is another maneuver that I'm trying to experiment with, trying to defend my pawn further with bishop and then maneuvering my bishop maybe or the knight to uh, c6, dependent on what my opponent is trying to do. Of course, queen has its own ways to get out of the uh, pawn structure and can be utilized in multiple ways. Now, before we proceed further, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So let's continue with our game. Here, bishop to d3, my opponent. I play a6 here. Looks like passive, but prevents knight coming in over to b5 because if knight comes in, I can take, but then opponent can take back and then... Certainly, I can feel some pressure as well on my king's uh, on my queen side. So here, my opponent plays uh, bishop e3, and then I go with bishop d6, trying to line up towards the king's side diagonal, which would most likely be the place where my opponent will castle. And that's what happens in the next move. And then I go with queen c7. Now, the idea behind queen c7 is just to create this beautiful battery, which would help you in the long run for sure when you are going to attack. Here my opponent maneuvers knight over to e2, trying to shift the knight over to king side. Maybe play pawn forward c3 or maybe even c4, trying to break open the c file, get the rook active, hit my queen with that. So few options from there as well. And I started my own attack from h5, trying to go towards my opponent king. Here queen to d2. I, I was not sure what my opponent is trying to do here, but maybe just connecting the rooks for now. Uh, also, this becomes a battery which can be utilized to exchange bishops in the long run once my queen moves away. So I just kept pushing the pawn h4 now, which uh, now my opponent plays bishop to f4, trying to exchange bishops because knight was already defending the square. So now a couple of defenses to that square and I have uh, queen and bishop lined up here. So I decided to just play pawn forward, which was the best move as well in the situation. Because if opponent takes, I can take back with the queen, and that's what happens. Here my opponent tries to exchange queen somehow. I think my opponent felt the pressure of my attack, and that led me to take the queen, and opponent takes with the knight, and loses the g2 pawn as well. Here uh, opponent can take the pawn, and that's what happens. And once he does, I maneuver my knight to c6. Now, if you see my... Position is fine enough. I can castle queen side. The edge file is opened up. Uh, the king is also opened up pretty much. So I can have I still got a good attack here. My pawn structure is uh, solid in the center. Uh, and yes, my knight is not developed, but it can be. Bishop is kind of a bit passive, but as I said, it defends. It is used, being used in defense. And then pawn to c3, my opponent, I got my knight over to f6, trying to finish my development now. Uh, then knight comes over to e5, and I just went with knight h5. 
Now the idea was if the knights are exchanged, I get a rook lift as well. And once I get the rook lift, I can castle and get the other rook as well into the attack. Here my opponent identifies that and just goes back wide, backwards or over to h3. I can take on the knight, but I just got my knight backwards here again. Opponent plays uh, f4, making sure that if I take, he can take back with the pawn as well. Uh, but once I did take, he should have taken with the f4, but he takes with the d4 instead, which was surprising to me as well. And then I go ahead with knight to g4. Now, I could have gone with knight to e4 as well, but then my opponent does take. And I take back my pawn would be a weakness in the future. So I don't want to ruin my pawn structure. So I went with knight to g4. Pawn structure is very important because when you're trying to exchange a lot of material during the middle game, it, it this, it's highly possible that it might go to an end game. And once that happens, your pawn structure would be the key to win you the games. So try and make sure your pawn structure is solid and you don't spoil when you are having exchanges on the board. Also, one more thing this knight does by coming over to f4 is attack the pawn on h2. So if the knight moves away, we can take the pawn, uh, maybe with the rook as well. So that next we can take the knight as well, maybe if open goes wrong, somewhere wrong. But then again, uh, what we have uh, apart from that is a fork coming from e3. Knight e3 would fork uh, the king and the rook. So that would be a good option as well. So uh, knight g4 felt uh, more solid to me, and that's why I went ahead with it. Open plays rook a e1, defending the uh, e3 square for the knight. And then I decided to castle. Now you would say that the king is wide open, not safe. But it is safe because there's no attack coming from here. The pawns are very much passive there. I can simply shift my king just in case rook comes back here. There's no such threat coming. My bishop can also come back on to c7, which c6, which was the initial plan to defend as well. So we were pretty good here uh, in pawn structure as well. And then a rook lift by the opponent, trying to maybe kick my knight away eventually from here, attack the knight. Uh, and then I went with bishop to c6 anyway, because I have a discovered attack coming next that is going to hit the rook as well and the king. So opponent uh, places his rook onto g3, attacking the knight. Now uh, it is being attacked, but doesn't matter because I'll play d4 first, which is in check to my opponent. He has to move the king. And once he does, it's a good idea now to take a pawn, c3. And you will say you are leaving your knight while doing this. So because I'll take the bishop in, uh, in exchange of that, and once I do take the bishop, suddenly the knight is being pressurized as well a couple of times and would be tough to defend it. So here my opponent takes back with the b pawn and I play pawn forward to g6. Now my purpose of playing g6 here was because I, if I just try to save my knight in the next move, say by coming back over to h6, my opponent can, the rook can take back on g7 and once rook comes in the seventh rank, that can be deadly anytime. So you don't want your opponent rooks to come down to the seventh rank. And that's why I tried to control that by placing pawn to g6. Here my opponent still plays uh, rook, uh, the knight over to f uh, over to g5, attacking the pawn now, which can lead to a good fork as well. And uh, here's a good move, which computer is resting rook takes bishop. I'm wondering how this works. Okay, you pressurize this. And then once you have done that, opponent F tries to take, then that's made. So it can get tricky. So rather you should block the diagonal. And once you do, I can still take a pawn. I can maneuver my king up. So that's another line which could have been played, but I didn't see that coming for sure. So I just went with rook f8 protecting my pawn here my opponent takes the knight and i take the bishop uh, and then he just maneuvers the king over to f2 i take another free pawn which i saw and then here i played king to c7 all the right moves now trying to acquire uh, the seventh rank maybe maneuver it uh, over to the center eventually because it is going to be an end game 
Now, Rook comes to d2, trying to prevent, uh, trying to take control of the middle, the open file, so that my Rook, if comes, he can take back, and then suddenly uh, Knight comes and takes extra pawn. So I went with Bishop d5. Now that blocks the Rook's way. So I'm still using my light square Bishop, which is a rare case. Uh, and it is very useful still in the end, trying to attack a pawn as well. So pretty solid there. Open place, pawn forward, h4, trying to break some things open up from here, maybe get the rook next, and then try and attack the f7. Uh, I played pawn forward here. f6 was bad, actually. I should have gone for the pawn kill. Uh, but my worries was that rook can come, and then I am just going to run my king uh, maybe downwards or somewhere else. And I didn't want to take that, but just clear out the situation because... It was kind of bothering me because if the pawn proceeds further, then it can be a headache as well. So I played uh, f6 straight away. My opponent does take here. I take back with the rook. And now opponent goes to b2 with his rook. I play pawn forward so that just in case I have to leave this rank, my pawn will not be weak, though the bishop was defending it backwards. But it's always good to push your pawns in the end game so that you can take leverage of that in the uh, future. Now, uh, rook comes to uh, d2, my opponent. I play king c6, just trying to move my king towards the center further. Opponent goes with uh, knight at 7 hitting my rook. So rook had to be moved. So rook f7. And then knight goes back. I try to acquire the center now with my rook, trying to exchange the rooks off the board. More exchanges means I'm in a better situation because of the two pawns against the single one. So this would be the main highlight going forward. And open tries to exchange the rooks, which was in my favor. So I did that. And then I just kept pushing my pawn forward. As you see, a4. Open tries to gain the center now. Open has to be careful here. If he just plays a move like king over to d3, then I have discoveries coming. I can take the pawn and I'm hitting it. Uh, with a check so next I can exchange the rooks and then it would be tough to control my pawns so open has to be careful and he was places rook on the c file I just moved the king and then comes down uh, surprisingly leaving the pawn maybe understood that it couldn't be saved but he could have hung for uh, some more time there but I took the pawn immediately as soon as I get the chance he gives a check I get the rook in between he can trade but he doesn't want to of course and then bishop there, and then he just takes a pawn, extra pawn there. So I took back with the bishop. But as soon as he takes back, uh, there's nothing stopping my pawn further. And then I just proceed with the pawn. He tries to stop. I just got my king backwards, which was bad. I should have gone ahead with the pawn because there was no threat attacking, and I could have pushed it further as well. But uh, I was think I think I was down on time, so I was trying to play fast as well here. Then I controlled uh, the A file and then attacked the rook. Rook goes down and I kept pushing my pawn then. Uh, and that was it. I got the queen on the board. And then it was just follow up, trying to make sure that the opponent doesn't queen, then second queen on the board. And then we, I was just chasing, taking all the pawns just in case. And soon after, my opponent resigns before I could checkmate. Uh, so yeah, it was a nice video, nice game. Uh, I liked it, uh, to be honest, and pretty much decent in the middle game, as, as I was explaining. A solid opening, a solid middle game, and a good end game as well. What else you want in chess? So I hope you liked the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow uh, with another interesting video. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.